The spell books also have a numerous amount of abilities on them, and there's two for each spell book, and they are all going to do something when you activate them, depending on if you have one or two crystals, meaning one or two active abilities when you activate your spell book. and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game Winter Queen, a game for two to four players that takes 20 to 30 minutes to play and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Winter Queen, you are playing as a magician in a land of eternal winter, which presides a Winter Queen. And every year, she will allow magicians to come across the land and perform miraculous spectacles using crystals. And whoever bedazzles her the best at the end of the competition will become the Queen's advisor. In this game, you will be taking crystals and placing them down on the, the board, attempting to secure specific areas while gathering books to score points when you place the crystals in certain locations. As the bag runs out and crystals get removed, the game will end, triggering a final scoring as aspect of the game, in which case whoever has the most is the winner and becomes the queen's advisor. Let's take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how to play, and then we'll come up for my review of the game Winter Queen by Crowd Games. Welcome to the game Winter Queen, and this is all set up for four players, and the way it's going to work is pretty simple. Go ahead and take the main board out and place it on the table, and then place your Winter Queen tokens on the five spaces with the white hexagons. After you do that, remove the rest from the game. These are all you're going to need. The blank spaces can have crystals on them, however, the places with crystals on them are basically going to be considered as crystals for the rest of the game. Also, go ahead and shuffle up the decks of the specific spaces spell books and place them in stacks of five in the corresponding emblem areas for green, purple, red, and blue. Additionally, go ahead and give one player this token. That player is the last person to see snow. Place the rest of these tokens out. These are basically going to be gold that you're going to acquire throughout the game or victory points. And then take out a number of crystals based on the number of players. And in a four player game, you'll leave them all in. And however, on your little handy dandy charts here, it'll tell you how many crystal holder tiles you have in, whether it be three or four, uh, and then, of course, how many removed crystals based on the number of players and the amount of crystals that are going to be on these holder tiles. And then you can begin the game, which is pretty simple. The first action you can take, and you're only going to take one action of three in a game, is to go ahead and take from the left holder area and place a crystal onto the board. That's one action you can do. So, for instance, if I was here, I could take one of these crystals and place it on any of these areas here. After you do that, you will then gather the top spell book from that specific realm and place it in front of you. You can never hold more than three spell books. The next action you can take is you can go ahead and take a crystal and place it on one of the two pages of your spell book. On your spell book, there's going to be two pages, and you'll be able to put one on either side. And like I said, there's only going to be able to have one on each. And that is going to give you a certain scoring ability when you activate your spell book. The third and final action you could do is you can activate a spell book. If you have one crystal on a spell book, you'll activate its ability, and each of these have a unique ability that will score you points. Or if you have two crystals on them, you will activate these in any order you choose, and then you will remove the spell book and or and crystals from the game. Additionally, if you have two crystals on your spell book, one for each page, you'll also be able to remove any crystal on the board uh, and put it back into the bag. Those are the three specific actions you can take in the game. And you're going to basically continue to go around the table choosing one of those three actions, and eventually these holder tiles will remove, be removed of crystals, and when that happens, you're going to be taking from the bag and placing out new ones. This is going to allow you to have a unique combination of crystals throughout the game. Always remember, too, whenever you take a crystal and, uh, and, and place it on the board here, you're going to be able to select one of the adjacent spell books, and there are five in total. Maximum you can have is three. And also, when you place a crystal on one of the queen's domains, which are white, you can select a spell book from any of the four regions. When the entire bag of crystals runs out and you've finally taken them all out, you're then going to have one final round until it gets to the first player, and then after that, everyone else will get a turn. But during that time, you're going to only be able to take crystals from the platforms. You'll also basically place all crystals from all other of these little crystal holder areas, and place them all into one area, removing the rest, and you'll be able to select 
from any that you so choose from that one singular area. Afterwards, in a clockwise order, players will activate their spell books that they have, but they will not remove them, allowing you to calculate score based on what you have left over, even if your opponents acted first. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. We'll now come up and discuss the game Winter Queen, a puzzling adventure for you sorcerers out there. A few caveats in the game Winter Queen, and the first one is when you're playing with two players, you're going to use less crystals and less crystal holder areas. Uh, and you're also going to be able to choose between any of the crystals on any of the holders. In a three or four player game, you're only going to be selecting crystals from the left hand side crystal area, which means eventually you're going to run out and you're eventually going to have to replace them. You're also gonna gain one point whenever you remove all of the crystals from a given area and then you're going to replace them. So actually taking the last crystal on an area might not be the greatest as far as your long-term plan, but it will score you points throughout the game. And because this is a fairly low scoring game, that can be very, very, very potentially useful for you at the end of the game. Five points is quite a lot of points. The spell books also have a numerous amount of abilities on them, and there's two for each spell book, and they are all going to do something when you activate them, depending on if you have one or two crystals, meaning one or two active abilities when you activate your spell book. And your player reference will tell you what they do. There's a ton of them. One of them will score you points for each of a specific type of crystal in all of the different zones, including the white zone. Another is going to score you a victory point for each crystal of that color that you placed on that page that is out on a spell book of another player and yourself. So if there are three red crystals out on the spell books among the other players, you can score up to three points from that specific ability. And there's also some ones that well, you're going to be crossing and dying, uh, dilating some straight lines and whatnot, and uh, you'll be able to gather points utilizing crystals uh, and how, how it's envisioned. There's, there's just a bunch of different ways you can score, basically, is how, what I'm saying. Uh, in the game, as you place down these crystals, it's going to be very important how you choose to place them based on the spell spell books you have. You can only have three spell books at any given time, and so if you're not careful, you might be helping your opponents out. You need to watch and see what they're gathering, where they're placing, and what spell books they're choosing to take. The game ends rather abruptly, and you actually kind of want to keep playing the game as the game is ending, which in my opinion is a good sign for a game, especially a puzzle game. And there's a lot of different choices you can make and you want to make before time runs out, which you're not going to be able to choose all of the different things. You're also going to be basically having these selections in a two player game, which is different than a three and a four player game based on what you have available to you and where you want to place them. It's all about strategic placement, the right choosing of your tableau spell books, and whether you want to activate one or two spells with your spell books to gather as many points as possible. It's a very close scoring game, so you're always going to feel like you have an opportunity to win. It's very unlikely that somebody's going to skyrocket ahead of another player, but it also can happen if they are strategically minded. Another thing really cool about this game is obviously the artwork is very, very beautiful, very, very well put together. It does feel like I'm in this winter wonderland and I'm placing crystals across the land, trying to earn the favor of the Winter Queen. Uh, the quality of the components is very, very nice. This is obviously a Russian version, but I do have the rules for English and they also gave me some English player references that I could take a look at. Uh, but for the most part, you do not need language to play this game. Uh, if if it was all in Russian and I just had a player reference, that's pretty much all I would need after being explained the rules once, because it's fairly language independent as far as the components go. The Everything, like I said, is really thick and sturdy and strong. It feels good to touch the pieces and move the crystals around the board. This is one of my favorite games that involves these specific crystals, because there's a lot of games that involve these pretty generic crystals that you can get on Amazon. This one does a really good job of that. Makes me feel like I want to place them on the board and connect certain patterns and basically uh, spread my, my favor across the realm. And other players are going to benefit from that or get hurt from that. Double placement of spell books is good too, and you actually can translate or activate your spell book and they have two pages that are occupied. You'll be able to remove crystals from the board, which is probably the only take that aspect in the game, but it can be very detrimental. It can cost your opponents quite a lot or force them to wait longer periods of times to activate their spells which at the end of the game is perfect for them to come back because players are not going to be able to activate um, their spell book or be able to remove crystals from the board at the end game round. When the last crystal is drawn from the bag, everybody takes that turn to the first player and then everybody else gets one more turn. That is when you're only placing down the board. 
And another thing too, which is really, really nice and innovative is the fact that all the spell books and crystals remain on the spell books when you calculate the scoring of the spell books at the end of the game, meaning that certain abilities and or uh, actions that you're taking, like this one here, which gives you points for the crystals that are on everybody's spell book, will stay active. And even the third player will score just as much as the first player with the same colored crystal. Overall, an excellent little game. Very, very fun, puzzly game. I've played it quite a few of uh, crowd games now. Crowd, C-R-O-W, Crow. It's got a little Crow logo with a D. Uh, and I've been very impressed. I'm excited to try out their next one, which I haven't yet played, but I'm excited to. Just based off of all these wonderful games I have here. If you're interested in picking up Winter Queen, link is down below in the description. If it's not something for you, why or why not? I don't think people are going to like this if they don't like puzzle games. They won't like this game if they don't enjoy the aspect of removing crystals from the board. There's a slight amount of take that in it. And of course, uh, some people are just not fans of these crystals, but I, I'm good with them depending on how they are used. And I think they're used really well in this game. For you puzzlers out there who like gateway games, Winter Queen, take a look. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Like I said before, if you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that bell notification button. It greatly does help us out. We do really appreciate it. You can also go ahead and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, top five lists, and our Christmas guide. You can go ahead and check those games out before it's too late. Affiliation links will be present as well. If you want to help us out, that's cool. Our Discord has wonderful stuff that we like to do. We're doing our Secret Santa which you guys have probably missed out on by now. But we also do weekly auctions. We do flea markets. And we're going to be doing some more stuff on there if you'd like to join. Link down below in the description. And of course, join our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook. We also do it on Twitch usually. You can go ahead and watch us play games just like this one down there. And we'll also be giving away games live on stream. If you want to join, you'll get to see what the game's like in even more detail, which can convince you on one way or another to pick up the game whether it's for you or not regardless though we thank you so much for watching and dante does as well and we hope to see you guys next time